Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Wednesday, March the 18th, and it's 4.49 p.m. Okay, I got a question in my email from our brother in Christ, Marcus. And, well, actually what it was is he was said he was doing some laundry and he was praying for, um, I believe he said the lost in the world or something like that. He was praying. And he heard in his the still small voice just say, Jeremiah 6-2. Okay, so he didn't know what in the world did that mean. So he looked it up. And he didn't understand what what does this mean. So he wrote to me and he said, what? what? He told me what happened and he said, I don't understand. So, all right, I looked it up and it says in the NASB, this is what mine says, the comely and dainty one, the daughter of Zion, I will cut off. Okay, so to understand exactly who is the daughter of Zion, I looked it up and the um, this is what one definition says. The daughter of Zion, and I'm sure some of you have studied this out and you know, and I'd like to know if you have a different answer. All right, the daughter of Zion is a people waiting to be saved. So that tells me the Jews, the Israelites, whether they're living over there or not, they're still waiting for their Savior. The real Orthodox Jews, not the Jews who say they are Jews but are not. That Those are Ashkenazi Jews, I believe is what you call them. Nazi, or N-A-Z-I, Ashkenazi, Nazi. Okay. So it says, anyway, the daughter of Zion is a people waiting to be saved after the punishment of exile, the Lord promises restoration of Israel. His chosen people will know gladness again when the Lord himself will praise them and save them. The daughter of Zion is also a land waiting for a king. So, we know that I, when I looked up in Jeremiah, and then I looked up in Daniel to see was he, was Jeremiah referring to when Jerusalem would be surrounded and the uh, Jews, some of them just were killed, some were taken as slaves, which was Daniel and the three young men who came to be called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I thought, is he prophesying of that time or perhaps it's a double prophecy and it was referring to the 70 AD incident when Jesus prophesied that soon one stone will not be left upon another and again the city of Jerusalem was burnt down I mean the temple completely gone in fact, I've seen videos where it says the Western Wall is really not even part of the temple. But that's what they consider what's left of it. So they pray at it, you know, and they stick prayers in the bricks and stuff. Or rocks, whatever they are. Anyway, so I thought, okay, is this going to happen again? And we know that they're going to try it again um, that there will be war over there I mean they're trying to attack them now the Palestinians have had the Iranians Saudi Arabians okay I'm not real up on what's going on over there I admit it but you all know 
There's been fighting over there. Left and right, Israelis are always having to fight, fight against the Palestinians. Okay, now uh, there's other, I mean, you could read all these verses about the daughter of Zion. And there's, what does the Bible mean when it refers to a daughter of Zion? And you'll get some um, different, kind of different answers. But basically, it sounds like it's Jerusalem and or Israel. Okay. So, still, when you go back to the verse, the comely, which is beautiful. Remember they said Jesus was not very comely. He wasn't very handsome. Okay, so comely means very nice to look at. And the dainty one, the daughter of Zion, I will cut off. Okay, well look how they live over there now. There are some Orthodox Jews who are praying. They go to that western wall and you can see them praying and they're dressed in their traditional garb and they're wearing their phylacteries on their heads or their arms. Those are the little black boxes that when they memorize a scripture they get to put it in there. Roll it up on a little piece of paper and somehow they stuff it in there. Well anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I felt led to I said okay I'm not really sure uh, what that means. I need to go back. Uh, I read the first verse and I decided I needed to go back to chapter 5 to get a full meaning here. And y'all, I'm going to, I know I feel led to read this to you and you see if it doesn't sound like a prophecy for today and will include America. So let's get started. Um, this is titled, Jerusalem's Godlessness. All right, and we know the word USA is in the middle of Jerusalem. Okay, someone brought that forth. Um, I forget who it was. One of those famous guys on YouTube. Anyway, might have been Steve Denoon. Anyway, I'll move on. Jeremiah 5, chapter 5, verse 1. Roam to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and look now and take note and seek in her open squares if you can find a man, if there is one who does justice, who seeks truth, then I will pardon her. Now what does that remind you of? That sound like the days of Lot. Didn't he tell Lot? <clears throat> uh, was it Abraham? If you can find 50 men, I'll spare Sodom. Well, how, how about, there's a lot. How about if I can find 40, Lord? Would you spare it if I could find 40? Let me look that up. I don't want to tell you wrong. Google. I'm pretty, he's pretty sure it was a lot. What if I... I'm going one-handed here. Find 40. Okay, here it is, Genesis eighteen twenty eight. Okay. Let's go to the entire chapter. Yeah, it was to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Okay, so anyway, he told Abraham... Uh, he saw three men standing nearby, 
which they were most likely angels. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet and bowed down to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my lord, do not pass your servant by. Now why did he say, My lord? And there were three men there. Did he know that one of them was Jesus? God? Would he have known it was Jesus who brought two angels with him? But anyway, um... Okay, I want to go down to verse 20. Then the Lord said, okay, so what? One of them is the Lord. That's called a Christophany, when Christ appeared in the Old Testament. This outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see... If what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me, if not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous and the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Listen to this. The Lord led me to this. Oh my goodness. Will the Lord destroy the righteous? along with the wicked? No, I know he won't, but anyway, here we go. Um, far be it from you. Will not the judge of the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, what if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. See, he would spare it. He would have spared Sodom and Gomorrah had he found thirty. And then he gets him down to twenty. And then he gets him down to, let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? And he answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And when the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Okay, so, it was Abraham that he told that. So now he's saying to Jeremiah, roam to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and look now and take note and seek in her open squares. If you can find a man, if there is one who does justice, who seeks truth, then I will pardon her. And although they say, as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. How many people do you know that say something and you go, Are you sure? And they go, I swear it. And we're not supposed to swear. But you hear that all the time. I do. Down here in the south, it's common. Okay. Yeah, the Bible Belt. 
people know they're not supposed to say that anyway. All right, verse 3. O Lord, do not your eyes look for truth? You have smitten them, but they did not weaken. Okay, so he did something. I don't know, maybe he sent a storm. He smite, he smote them, but they did not weaken. You have consumed them, but they refused to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to repent. This is so like today. It's unbelievable. Then I said, They are only the poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord or the ordinance of their God. I will go to the great and will speak to them. I think he means, in our day, we would think of TV preachers, the high up preachers that ought to know the answers, right? I will go to the great and will speak to them, for they know the way of the Lord and the ordinance of their God. That's like the commandments, the laws. But they too, with one accord, have broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will slay them. A wolf of the deserts will destroy them. A leopard is watching their cities. Everyone who goes out of them will be torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many, their apostasies are numerous. And remember, <clears throat> the Lord will not slay the righteous with the wicked. So if he does this now, where are the righteous? We're out of here. Don't let anybody tell you that we're all going through it and there's a post-tribulation rapture that the Lord's going to burn up the earth, everybody. No. They were well-fed, lusty horses each one neighing after his neighbor's wife. Okay, that was a bad joke. But it just sort of came out. Shall I not punish these people, declares the Lord. And on a nation such as this, shall I not avenge myself? Go up through her vine rows and destroy. But do not execute a complete destruction. Strip away her branches. For they are not the Lord's. Hmm. Sounds pretty mad to me. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously with me, declares the Lord. Now, you should know, but if you don't, the northern part of the land of Israel became Israel. Okay, the house of Israel. And the ten tribes each owned a parcel. Ten of the tribes owned Israel. But Benjamin and Judah owned the southern part. And they called that Judah. Okay? But Benjamin owned his share down there in Judah also. All right. They have lied about the Lord and said, Not he. Misfortune will not come on us, and we will not see sword or famine. Do you hear people saying that now? Oh, Trump is going to make America great again, and our prayers are going to turn the wrath of God away. Yeah, now look where we're at. The prophets are as wind, and the word is not in them. Thus it will be done to them. Judgment proclaimed. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, because you have spoken this word, Behold, I am making my words in your mouth fire, and this people wood, and it will consume them. Behold, I am bringing a nation against you from afar, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. It is an enduring nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know, nor can you understand what they say. Now, an ancient nation, that may be talking about Israel, but it could also be talking about us. Their quiver is like an open grave. All of them are mighty men. They will devour your harvest and your food. They will devour your sons and your daughters. They will devour your flocks and your herds. They will devour your vines and your fig trees. They will demolish with the sword your fortified cities in which you trust. See, back then Israel had fortified cities. They had walls around them. All, I think most cities did. Yet even, this is verse 18, Yet even in those days, declares the Lord, I will not make you a complete destruction. So this is clearly not talking about America. There are chapters in Jeremiah, which are uh, 50 and 51, I believe it is, that are prophecies for America. So let's continue. I'm just showing you, though, how God feels about the way people are treating him. It shall come about when they say, why has the Lord our God done all these things to us? Then you shall say to them, As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so you will serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Now hear this, O foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Kind of sounds like the sleeping church, doesn't it? Verse 22. Do you not fear me? declares the Lord. Do you not tremble in my presence? For I have placed the sand as a boundary for the sea, an eternal decree so it cannot cross over it. Though the waves toss, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot cross over it. But this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and departed. They do not say in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain in its season, both the autumn rain and the spring rain, who keeps for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have withheld good from you. For wicked men are found among my people. They watch like fowlers lying in wait. They set a trap. They catch men like a cage full of birds, so their houses are full of deceit. Therefore they have become great and rich. They are fat. They are sleek. They also excel in deeds of wickedness. 
they do not plead the cause, the cause of the orphan, that they may prosper, and they do not defend the rights of the poor like they pretend to. Yeah, right. They just want to kill them. That's my opinion. Shall I not punish these people, declares the Lord? On a nation such as this, shall I not avenge myself? An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule on their own authority. You could say the priests in our day, in our land, are the preachers on TV, the famous ones, how many of them preaching prosperity and hyper grace and things like that. And my people love it so. Now he's referring to the Israelites. His people, God's people were the Israelites. They were the chosen people. They are the chosen people. We can't ever forget that. He said, <clears throat> And my people love it so. But what will you do at the end of it? Now, in 6, chapter 6, verse 1. Flee for safety, O sons of Benjamin, from the midst of Jerusalem. Now blow a trumpet in Tekoa, and raise a signal over Beth Hesarim. For evil looks down from the north and a great destruction. The comely and dainty one, the daughter of Sion, I will cut off. Now, that's supposed to be Israel, from what I could tell, the daughter of Zion. He will cut off. And they have been cut off twice now. And they will be surrounded. I'm trying to remember my um, I know it, I know it after the thousand year millennial reign. They'll be surrounded again, but Jesus will consume them. They won't even get an arrow off or a bullet out of their gun, and they will be consumed. But I can't remember what happens at the beginning of the millennial reign. I think there is a war, and there will be destruction. But the Lord will come and end it. There, there will be many Israelites saved. The ones who are Orthodox, they believe in God. They're waiting for their Savior. But there's a lot of Jews who are atheists now. They're worldly and secular. And they will probably be the ones that will face destruction. Okay, let me continue. Uh, shepherds and their flocks will come to her. They will pitch their tents around her. They will pasture each in his place. Prepare war against her. Arise and let us attack at noon. Woe to us, for the day declines. For the shadows of the evening lengthen. That sounds to me like fall is approaching. Because we know that June 21st is the longest day of the year. When there's 12 hours in the morning, 12 hours, 12 hours. No, the longest day of the year. No, it was at the spring equinox when it's 12 and 12, right? Someone just told me that. I already can't remember, but I think it is the spring equinox when they're 12 and 12. 
anyway, June 21st is the longest day of the year. So if you go through summer and fall is coming on, you'll notice the days, the days are getting shorter and shorter as summer goes on. Okay. Arise and let us attack by night and destroy her palaces. So they started to say, let us attack at noon. Woe to us, for the day declines, for the shadows of the evening lengthen. So then it says, arise and let us attack by night and destroy her palaces. For thus says the Lord of hosts, cut down her trees, cast up a siege against Jerusalem. So the Lord will be behind it. And thus, this was talking about 70 A.D. I welcome your comments for those of you who have studied this and know more than I do. But um, even though I've read this a few times, uh, it would probably take me hours to search out each scripture and get read different opinions and see if there's a majority that believe it's this way versus that way or does this mean now does this mean back in 70 AD you see what I'm saying so I'm just doing the best I can here I'm trying to show you how this compares to what's going on now that the Lord is his wrath is coming right now it's Satan's time Satan is causing this COVID-19 the Lord is just allowing it Satan is the one bringing about all this weather that's destroying people's towns and killing their animals and uh, just flooding out their cities and they're losing their homes and everything they own because of weather warfare that the Illuminati are causing and then they're calling it global warming makes me sick anyway that's what I'm reading this for to show you how way back in Jeremiah's day which, by the way, I meant to tell you, when I looked in my Bible, which tells when these books were written, the approximate dates, this, um, when Israel was attacked and they brought Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I can never remember the Hebrew names, but anyway, when they brought them over, to serve Nebuchadnezzar, it was almost the same time. It could, this was could have been written a little ways before Jerusalem was attacked. Okay, but it isn't clear. They're like what they call contemporaries. They lived in the same approximate time. Okay, I meant to mention that earlier. So it could have meant then, and it could be a double prophecy for when it happened in 70 A.D., but could it be a triple prophecy for, when, for something soon to come? And I say to you, yes, it could very well be. I'll move on. The Lord of hosts says, cut down her trees and cast up a siege against Jerusalem as he's going to do in America and other nations eventually, it will be the Lord causing whatever happens. The rest of the trumpet and bowl judgments will be from the Lord. All right. And cast up a siege against Jerusalem. This is the city to be punished in whose midst there is only oppression. In fact, now that I think about it, the seal judgments are his as well. Because it's when the seals are opened that all that stuff happens. 
that's why I do not believe the bride of Christ will be here when God's judgments start happening. Those who are not holy enough for heaven will not go. It, it, I just, I cannot see the Lord Jesus Christ letting all of us that have gotten messages about it, all of us got deceived. This COVID virus is man-made. Satan's behind it. Just like he was behind the Holocaust of the Jews and 10 million Christians. Don't forget that. Nobody ever mentions that when they talk about the Jewish people being killed. 6 million Jews. 10 million Christians. That was Satan, not, not God. Alright, let me keep on. As a well keeps its waters fresh, so she keeps fresh her wickedness. Violence and destruction are heard in her. Sickness and wounds are ever before me. Be warned, O Jerusalem, or I shall be alienated from you and make you a desolation, a land not inhabited. And we know Jeremiah goes on to prophesy that Babylon, which is us, will be so destroyed we will never again be inhabited. Verse 9, Thus says the Lord of hosts, They will thoroughly glean as the vine, the remnant of Israel, pass your hand again like a grape gatherer over the branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are closed and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. They have no delight in the word of the Lord. You understand that? But I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am weary with holding it in. I think this is Jeremiah talking because it's not got... Um, well, that doesn't have quotes around it, but now here's quotes. Pour it out on the children in the street and gather and on the gathering of young men together. For both husband and wife shall be taken, the aged and the very old, this must be the Lord talking now, because there wasn't quotes around one part that says, But I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am weary with holding it in. And then, quote, pour it out on the children, so forth. The aged and the very old. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, declares the Lord. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. This just this just says to me, wait, let me read a little bit more. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, peace, peace. But there is no peace. Who's been telling us peace? Oh, everything's all right. Everything's going to be just fine. Were they ashamed because of the abomination they have done? They were not even ashamed at all. 
They did not even know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk in it and i set watchmen over you saying listen to the sound of the trumpet but they said we will not listen sounds like the sleep in church Therefore hear, O nations, this is not just Israel here, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, he's talking to everyone, behold, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of of their plans their plans whose plans who's making the plans for the new world order the Illuminati the Jesuits Satan the Catholic Church excuse me because they have not listened to my words and as for my law, they have rejected it also. For what purpose does frankincense come to me from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, and your sacrifices are not pleasing to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I am laying stumbling blocks before this people and they will stumble against them fathers and sons together neighbor and friend will perish so I'm going to end it there it goes into talking about the enemy from the north people coming from the north land and there's different opinions on who that is. But anyway, what got to me about these two chapters is how similar it sounds like he could be talking about America. The Lord is, of course, back then, those people had to follow the Old Testament the Torah, and there was like 618, 613, I forget how many, but over 600 laws that they had to follow. And some of them included murdering, or it's punishment, but you had to kill people for not keeping the Sabbath. You could take your child, I guess it would be a grown at least 18 or over, I would think, that was disobedient. And you could kill them. You, you had to take them out and stone them to death. I mean, imagine trying to follow those laws now. <laughs> There'd be so many people more in jail than there are already. Excuse me, I seem to have a little bit of indigestion. <laughs> It happens. I don't take those pills anymore unless I just have to. Um, or some baking soda and water when I remember. Okay, so anyway, I, I don't know if this answered your question, Marcus, about 6-2, specifically the comely and the dainty one. The daughter of Zion, I will cut off. It could be 
He wanted you to ask me. It led me to reading five and six. And then I decided I need to make a video of this to show people that the Lord is serious about us following his commandments. Now for us in this day and age, Jesus tells us if we love him, we will obey his commandments. He changed things. I've talked about it before. He gave us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That is really hard to do sometimes. But if you really love him and you think one day you didn't spend enough time in prayer or whatever you just say I'm sorry Lord I got so caught up in life you just apologize ask forgiveness and move on you don't beat yourself up about it you try to do better the next day the Lord is the lover of our soul okay I feel like I'm getting on fire. <laughs> so, I hope I made my point. And if you have any comments that could help us all understand any of this any better, please feel free to leave them. Because I know that when it comes to the Old Testament, like when I pulled up, who is the daughter of Zion? I got three different answers. Well, they were kind of the same but different. So that's what I'm talking about. I really don't. I mean, I could spend three, four, five days looking up all these different scriptures and different commentaries on what they think they mean. What it boils down to is what you don't understand in the Word of God. Take it to the Lord and ask Him and pray about it. But I'll tell you this. It tells us for sure the Lord is certain. He means for us to do what He said to do and love our neighbor as ourself. Did I say that? Love your neighbor as yourself. Do the good deeds that you were saved to do. All right. With that, I'll say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you and all of your devices and over myself and over our internet connections. Okay. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.